So two or three questions. What is the mark you are targeting in your exam? How is your result you want to be? Is it 70 out of 100, 80, 90 or 100? 100. How many of you are willing to get the 100? Yes. Okay. My score in metrology is 98. The second highest score in the academy from last few batches is 96. Two guys scored 94. Here I am seeing someone to beat my score. I want someone to score a 100 and show it to me. Okay, then I'll be happy. Okay, so that is the question. You are targeting only 100. No other mark is allowed. Okay. Does marks matter? This is the second question. Will scoring 100 matter? Will you, if you fail in the exam, does it matter? Answer please. Sir, actually what matters is how much hard work we are doing and we are right. determined towards what, are, what we are doing actually right now. Correct. So marks are not important. If you fail, that is perfectly fine. But you have to work hard to score a hundred. And exam is only a reflection of how much we know. Okay, we are just testing ourselves in the exam. Because when the airline comes with a test, giving you hundred questions, whoever solves, whoever gets the highest mark will get a job. Whoever doesn't get the highest mark, you will not enter an airline. You, you, there are pilots with a license with no airline job sitting. Okay. I, I don't want my students to enter that scenario. Am I clear on that? Yes, sir. Very good. Next. Sujita Reddy, I, I really want to mute. And when you want to talk, you can press your space bar. Yeah, sure, sir. That is like uh, the background disturbance. Okay. I guess your camera is the other side. So you have to turn your camera. Oh, wait a second. Okay. Or you can use that camera, na? Uh, that uh, which camera you want to use. Yeah, yes. <clears throat> now, sir? Yeah, sure. Good. Very good. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Now, which is the most important topic when it comes to flying an aircraft? I'll just stop my share and share it wireless. When it comes to flying an aircraft, which of the following is most important subject? A, meteorology, B, regulations, C, navigation, D, technical general. Alpha and Charlie. Hmm? So, Matt and Nev. No, only one answer is allowed. Only one answer is allowed. Huh? Of course, this is a metrology class, day one. Any other answers? Sir, all of the above. You, you have to choose only the best answer. Okay, in exam, you will find that two options are almost correct. It is not choose the correct answers. No? It is choose the best answer. Okay. We can choose only one answer. The answer is meteorology. See, in day-to-day -day life, first thing which will determine whether today you can take off or not is determined by your weather. If you're flying in the flying school, whether you have visual meteorological conditions or not, whether you can come back and land safely or not. See, it is not while taking off weather, it is also, you have to see the forecast when I go and land at that airport, what will be the weather there? Are the, is there any rain going on? Is there any thunderstorms going on? Is there any cyclones are there? Correct. So MET is the most important thing that is important for a pilot. It is the basic. Without this knowledge, you shouldn't be flying. Okay. You shouldn't be flying. Here, I'm very sorry to say this, but in the last three years, I'm into aviation. 
I've started my aviation career. I have seen six aircrafts crash in India. Three of them happened due to weather. So that important is meteorology. Okay. So other three different reasons. Some pilot error. Okay. Because pilots to be blamed first, something happens. Some due to technical malfunction. But three of them were due to weather. Clear. Metrology, we will deal it in a very practical sense, not just completing the syllabus. Completing the syllabus, passing the exam. Okay. Give me five days, spend three hours with me. Daily, I can pass you metrology. Okay. Passing you the metrology is not uh, required. Okay. So I want you guys to understand the and feel the atmosphere. Here. Metrology per se, I'll take, I, I divide metrology into 25 chapters. Of this, 24 chapters are the basics. Okay, in first chapter, I will give you a general idea of, about atmosphere. Second chapter, I'll teach you something about pressure. Third, temperature fourth density etc etc fifth winds see all these are like basics and if you understand these 24 chapters then you will understand the last chapter in the end climate okay see metrology is the easiest chapter all you have to do is listen to the class spend half an hour reading whatever i have Thought in class, 15 minutes for the homework. That's all. At max, one and a half hour class per day and one hour as a homework. Okay. I guarantee you 96 marks because that is the highest till now scored by my student. Okay. Next session, when I'm taking the first metrology class, I want here, I guarantee you 100 marks because that was the score given by last attempt stream. I want like how many of you are willing to do that? Okay. I already see some faces which are trying to do that. Am I clear? Good. Now, if you don't understand the basics, you are not understanding Indian climatology and Indian climatology. I will do it as if like you can answer any question. I mean, not just the question. For example, you will know when the rain happens. Will it rain today? Will it rain tomorrow? Or will be the weather tomorrow? Day after tomorrow? To that exact date, I'll be teaching you. Okay. It is easy to understand once you understand weather from a pilot and a meteorologist from both points of view. Clear? Shall we move on? Shall we move on? India. China, Russia. Here, for example, these four countries are making an aircraft. Okay. They are making an aircraft. That means they are building their own aircrafts. Now, let's say, what is the average temperature in India? Anyone? on an average over the year, if you calculate, I'll say around, um, say 35 degrees. Okay. Here, I don't want to fly China aircraft. So you'll remove it. What is the average temperature in Russia? I'll also remove US. Let's keep the discussion short. What is the average temperature in Russia? It is around, see, it is a very cold country, correct? In the winters, the temperature will go minus 40, minus 50. Correct. Let's say average temperature is minus 10 degrees centigrade. Okay. Now, Indians have made their own aircraft. Russians have made their own aircraft. Now, let's say Indians made their aircraft to fly in India. That is, it will best fly at 35 degrees centigrade. 
Now, why is the temperature important? See, morning we have seen how the lift is generated. I will teach it again. Okay. It depends on the number of air molecules passing above and under the wing. Correct. So, temperature increases. What happens to the density of air from your lower classes? Decreases. Decreases. Correct. So, at 35 degrees centigrade in India, density of air is less. Clear? In Russia, at minus 10 degrees centigrade, density of air is more. Correct. Now, let's say this is the Indian aircraft flying in India. Okay. Let's say this is the Russian aircraft flying in Russia. Now, the amount of air molecules passing on the Russian wing is more because it is cold. Correct. Now, because the number of air molecules passing on the Indian wing is less. So, they have to make a wing which produces more lift for less amount of air passing on it. Correct. Now, because the weight is same for both aircraft, let's assume, to produce same lift, this wing should be bulkier. This wing should have aerodynamic characteristics that will produce lift with less density. But Russians will produce a smaller wing because there is a lot of air because high density, because the temperature is less in Russia. Now, same lift is produced. Let's assume this Russian aircraft comes to India. Can it fly in India? No, it cannot because the wing surface area, then it has to increase to produce more lift. Correct. So, Russian aircraft cannot come and land in India, but Indian aircraft can go and land in Russia because it has to just decrease its angle of attack to produce lesser lift. Clear? So, that means here if every country, every manufacturer is following different standards, Russia is building for minus 10 degrees centigrade, India is building for 35 degrees centigrade, then every aircraft, th there is no common factor. Correct. You cannot do international trips with this kind of business. Correct. That is why our ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization. It, this is the head of the all civil aviation that goes in the entire world. It has said, okay, guys, you wait. I will give you something or less. ISA conditions. What are I, what is meant by ISA? International mm -hmm. standard atmosphere. Here, what it did, it took the values of all countries, temperature of this country, that country, all countries in the entire world, and it made an average, average temperature of the entire world. It came out to be 15 degrees centigrade. It said, here, see, if you are making an aircraft in your wind tunnel, that air has to have a temperature of 15 degrees centigrade. Correct. So every country starts making, started making the aircraft when they are manufacturing, keeping the temperature as 15 degrees centigrade. Clear? So in ISA atmosphere, what is the temperature? 15 degrees Celsius. Very good. 15 degrees Celsius. Not only temperature, it has given for humidity. It has given for acceleration due to gravity. That is, they are attracting the aircraft. Correct. So, there are a set of conditions given by ICAO. These are called as ISA conditions. Am I clear on this? Okay. okay. Does someone know what is saturated air? What is meant by saturation? Okay. In the news, you would have seen correct. Today, uh, the weather is like this. It is going to rain. Now, okay. I'll just show you. Sir, maximum percentage of water vapor contained in air. Very good. That is the correct answer. Okay. Now, if you see, generally they will give in the forecast 
Sir, what is this? Okay. Do you see? Humidity. Okay. Today, the humidity is 37 percentage. For example, the air around me, this is the Hyderabad, Telangana. Okay. This is my location. Approximately, it is not Chintal. Anyways. But today, the air around me can hold 100 water vapor molecules. But it is holding how many? Only 37 percentage. Correct. Correct. This is called as saturation. Okay. Now the air is said to be unsaturated because it is not saturated. Clear? Can I ask you a question? Which of the following parcels of air is saturated? Option A, 37%, is it saturated? Option B, 60%, option C, 90%, option D, 95%. Tell me which of the following parcels of air you call it as saturated air? There are four parcels of air with you. Answer please. I mean, what is the limit? You can choose two answers also in this case, two or three answers also. When will you call the air is saturated with water vapor and when you call air is unsaturated? Guess. Sir, uh, 95. Okay. Ravi Kumar. Sir, 37. 37 is unsaturated. No, I have already said. Less Sir, 90. 90 and more. Who is 90. It? Who is it? Who is it? Sanisha? Sahil. Sahil. Sir, uh, uh, if air is saturated 100%, then only we can call it as saturated air, right? Very good. Very good. So, someone has read before coming to class. Okay. <laughs> the answer is none of the above. 100%. Okay. So, you will call air saturated <coughs> when only 100% is humidity. Its relative humidity is 100%. Clear. 99.9999% saturation is still called as unsaturated air. It is still called as unsaturated air. Clear. Saturation means absolute saturation. Okay. This saturated air is also called as wet air. This unsaturated air is also called as dry air. Am I clear on this? Super clear till now. So, according to the ICAO, the temperature at mean sea level is 15. Here, uh, see, I use uh, two systems. One is a Windows and one is a uh, I, Mac. So, I take the classes on Mac. I prepare my slides on Windows. So, the thing is like, whenever you see question mark, that is a uh, error between the Windows and the Mac. Apple systems. Okay. So it is not question mark. It is 15 degrees centigrade. 15 degree centigrade. That is the average temperature at mean sea level. Okay. At mean sea level, I say condition. First thing we learned that it's 15 degrees centigrade at the mean sea level. Clear? Till now it is clear. So second thing, air is considered dry. I'm talking about the ISA conditions. Okay. When you are making an aircraft, these are the conditions you have to follow. Clear? ICAO has given a set of these things. First two clear. Yet, you know, my English teacher, okay, I have a habit of reading books. Okay, I have a lot of books, generally, anyway, they, they're there. Now, how this started is, it started with the magic. Okay, I remember still that day. It was in exam hall. Okay, I completed my exam. She was the invigilator, and uh, we used to live in a hostel. In a hostel, what happens is everybody will have a rack. In the classroom, we have a rack to keep our books. We did not take the books to hostel. Okay, now because this was my bench, I was sitting here like this, 
and I have completed my exam. So I grabbed a book, someone else's book from here. I submitted my paper. I cannot go leave the exam hall. So I started reading a book because back, I don't know now, there were like Hound of Baskerville in the 10th class. Correct. It was like your, I, is, it is it still there? Hound of Baskerville in your syllabus in 10th class? No? Yes, sir. It is there? Yes, sir. Okay. So that's a very interesting, uh, this thing. So I was reading, she said, do you want to know a trick? Okay. <clears throat> Read this book. 10 times. Every time you read, you will understand a different story. That means once you read a book once, you will understand something. Next time when you read, you will understand better. Okay. Okay. Then I'll think, oh, this guy is thinking that. So this is why in that previous chapter, he was doing this. Correct. From there, I did not stop, re stop reading books. I read a lot of books. Even now, I read a lot of books. I, you will see whenever I give you a question in navigation, I, you see me reading something here, correct? a book or a Kindle on whatever it is. Correct. So today morning, I have taught you what is static pressure. Okay. Because there are some new students into the metrology alone, not attending navigation. I would like to teach the same topic again. You will understand the same concept in a better fashion. Okay. The pressure at a mean sea level, according to ICO, okay, that means at the sea level, mean sea level means an average sea level. At the sea level, it is 1013 decimal 25 hectopascals. Okay. No. Uh, let me take Ravi Kumar. Ravi Kumar, what is your weight? Oh, you don't ask her. <laughs> there are a lot of girls in class. So. <laughs> 92, sir. 82. Very good. Okay. Now, see, when I say 82, you all can feel 82 cages, how much it is, correct? Now, when I say 1013 decimal 25 hectopascals, can you understand anything? The new students only for met? No, correct. You don't know what is it. I'll explain what is it. See, if you do 1013 decimal 25 hectopascals, you convert into PSI. That will be equal to 14.7 PSI. Correct. Again, the same question. Here, what is the pressure you feel in your car tire? Your car tires, what is the pressure you feel? The answer here, nobody drives a car. 35 PSI or 40 PSI. Okay, 35 to 40 PSI, let's say 35 PSI. So what is PSI? Pounds per, per, per square inch. Square inch. Now, if you take one square, okay, where on your car tire, on the inside, okay, on the tire inside, okay. So assume this is a car tire, okay, on the inside of the tire, if you take one square inch, the pressure exerted due to air you feel on that square inch is 14.7 pounds per square inch. Okay, 14.7 pounds. Here, same way if you convert, sorry, uh, sorry, on your car it is 35 pounds per square inch. Correct. So if you convert this 1013.25 to PSI, it is 14.7 PSI. Now, if you go to gym, you will know 1 kg is equals to 2.2 pounds. Correct. If you convert did this pounds per square inch into kg per square inch, kg per square inch, it will be approximately 14.7. It will be around 6.9 something. I will take it as 7 kg per square inch. Clear? Now, that means if I am sitting in this atmosphere, if I am sitting at sea level, in ISA conditions, okay, if you take one inch of my body, okay, one inch of my body will look this much. The pressure acting here is seven kgs, approximately seven kgs. Now, if you take whole my body around 100 square inches, the pressure acting is 
सेवन हंड्रेड के जीस ओके आई एम करेंटली लिफ्टिंग सेवन हंड्रेड के जीस बट व्हाट हैपेंस इज वी आर बोर्न एंड वॉट अप इन दिस एटमॉस्फेयर we are accustomed or acclimated already to this atmosphere it will not you will not feel it because before you were born in your mother's womb you will you are you are still experiencing the same pressure understand now let's take a runway there is an aircraft okay Let's take this aircraft as a Boeing seven four seven. Now, if you take a wing cross section, the lift is produced due to the movement of air above and below it. Correct. That means lift is generated due to air flowing above the wing. Now, this seven four seven, which weighs one lakh thirty, let's say eighty seven thousand. Kgs, you can lift it in the air just by accelerating around fifteen hundred feet. That's all. So you can lift this in air. This happens because the wing surface area of a seven four seven is very huge. Correct. On that one square inch, you can actually exert a lift force of seven kgs. Now imagine how many square inches a seven four seven has. That much amount of force. The air has to lift seven four seven into air, correct? So imagine a def dead lift or lifting something which is hundred kgs. Not possible, okay? Unless you go to gym daily, you have a six packs. It is not possible, correct? So imagine you can lift this weight one lakh eighty seven thousand kgs into air just by accelerating fifteen hundred feet because that is the amount of pressure we are having on the Earth, correct? At the mean sea level. Am I clear on this? Okay. So this is not a detailed explanation, but once you go into the next chapter, next chapter, once you come into navigation technical general, then I'll explain in detail how these forces of lift are there. What is like there are a lot of things, okay, which I don't want to go into details. Any questions on this? I I am willing to explain. Anyone? No questions. Okay. Can I move forward? So that is. the pressure that is the amount of pressure we uh, actually experience on the earth that is this is the second thing we learned and the third thing is pressure at mean level 1013 decimal 2 5 hectopascals okay next here density of air this is air at mean sea level it is 1 12.25 This is one two two five grams per meter cube. Okay, this you have to remember. I last once I complete this slide. Okay, next. Here acceleration due to gravity. You all know correct. Nine point eight meter per second square. That it is like nine eighty centimeters. Same nine point eight meters is nine eighty centimeters per second square. Am I clear? Because see, Earth is not first thing a perfect sphere. Okay, and in the Earth, the metals keeps on moving in the core. Acceleration due to gravity is not constant all over the Earth. It is more at some places. It is less at some places. But they take an average of nine point eight meter per second square or nine eighty centimeter per second square. clear no till here it is clear okay 1 2 3 4 5 points are here now this slide now see anyone uh, who is from bangalore anyone from bangalore rice fans no anyone from a hill station rice fans Any from from Chandigarh rice fans? Chandigarh. Very good. Now today afternoon, what was the temperature in Chandigarh? Is it hot? You are on mute. What? 
okay anybody like we are not able to hear you we are not able to hear you now yeah, yeah. now we are able uh, it was around um, 25 to 30 somewhere around that okay Okay. Shimla the temperature is 17. One day in the mid summer I was working at PGI Chandigarh. Okay, I only worked there for like one or two months. Year the temperature will go in the chandigarh to 45 degrees centigrade this is the actual temperature in a very hot summer okay whenever we get one day or two days off what i'll do i'll take my car and i'll go to what was this place here i'll go to shimla now what is the distance between chandigarh and shimla it's just like uh, 80 kilometers around max to max when it is 45 degrees centigrade when i start in the afternoon i will reach shimla by let's say let's say i started at 3 pm i will reach shimla by 6 pm because it is a hill i have it is a ghat road correct the temperature at shimla it will generally by the time i reach it will be like 15 degrees centigrade in the night the temperature at shimla will go to like 5 degrees centigrade okay you spend two days with that cool temperature and again come back and work at 45 degrees centigrade correct now just 80 kilometers difference and why is this so much of uh, a temperature difference because shimla is a hill station so what so what see sun is at a distance so many thousands and thousands of kilometers your hill station probably it's like like 5000 feet above correct so why is there so much temperature difference i'll tell you the answer see mean sea level in isa conditions what is the temperature 15 degrees 15 degrees celsius 15 degrees celsius celsius now let's say chandigarh it is not at mean sea level let's say chandigarh is at mean sea level okay now to go to shimla you climb the hill on the ghat road and probably shimla is here okay the temperature like let's say the elevation of shimla is let's say 6500 feet okay now on a hot day temperature at uh, let's say chandigarh is 40 degrees centigrade now when you climb from the mean sea level for every 1000 feet the temperature will decrease by 1.98 degree centigrade or approximately 2 degree centigrade okay now if the temperature here is 40 degree centigrade what is the temperature in shimla 40 minus okay so i'll take 2 degree centigrade decrease per 1000 feet so i go 1000 feet up it will become 38 i go 38. one more 1000 36 i'll go one more 1000 34 i'll go one more 1000 32 i'll go one more 1000 32 30 uh 1 2 3 4 5 i'll go one more 1000 628 i'll go 500 more because 6500 we decided correct so it will be how much 27 degrees centigrade compare 40 degrees centigrade heat with 27 degrees centigrade like my ac was at 28 i turned it off just now because i was feeling cold so this is the reason shimla is cold it is at a higher altitude now the question is as you go up why does the temperature decrease correct see shimla is closer to the sun than chandigarh why does temperature decrease as you go up? 
Anybody wants to answer this question? Anybody knows the answer? Raise your hands. Anybody knows the answer? Raise your hands. Okay. Can I guess? Hmm? Can I guess? Yeah, guess. Maybe, uh, maybe sun is not heating up the air. Why? Coming from the earth. Does the earth, earth surface heat up the air? Very good. Very good. I'll take it. Well, that's because that it's a role of a troposphere. Huh? Because it is a role of a troposphere. No, no, no. nothing, nothing. See, I thought you maybe two reasons. What? First reason, lapse rate, and the second reason is as we go up. No, I'm saying, why is there a lapse rate? Why is the temperature decreasing as you go up? That is the question. I'll tell you the answer. See, let's say this is Earth. Let's say this is atmosphere. Do you see the yellow shade? Okay, this is the atmosphere. This is the air. Okay. Now let's say this is sun. No, sun gives. Like, is the temperature of sun high or less? very high correct so sun gives light in a lower frequency wavelength the frequency will be very small okay now the sun's rays cannot heat the atmosphere directly they will pass through the atmosphere without heating it without heating the atmosphere now they directly come and hit the earth surface and the earth surface will get hot okay now the earth surface will heat the adjacent molecules now because these molecules at this level are far away from the sun from the earth surface they are less hot i mean if the, you take these molecules they are very far away the their temperature is even less correct so from the earth surface as your altitude increases the temperature decreases since atmosphere is heated from the bottom or in other words earth earth is heating the atmosphere not the sun that is the reason at the surface of the earth you find temperatures very high and that is 15 20 30 and as you go up the temperature decreases how many of you understood till now Before continuing, okay, I will give you notes like this. Okay, this is my notes. Now, this notes, how is it prepared? It is prepared from different sources. Okay, what I teach doesn't follow IC Joshi, doesn't follow Oxford. Here, reading Oxford, it will take three, four months. Reading IC Shoji will take one and a half, two months. I have combined those two books along with other books and I have made my own notes. Okay. I literally hand typed it. It took me six months spending three hours a day. Okay. This is a thick book and it is still not complete because it keeps on improving. I keep on improving the notes. Correct. Here, I will be sharing these notes with you. A sincere request, please don't share it outside the academy. Okay, it is my hard work. Let me get paid for this. Am I clear on this? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just a second. Okay. Fine. <clears throat> what is the sun's uh, light? Uh, sun. Uh, what light is sun giving? It is short wave radiation it is not low frequency it is low wavelength actually clear it is like the opposite okay just remember sun gives out short wave radiation correct earth heats up and it will transfer the heat to the atmosphere 
okay there are different ways the uh, earth will transfer the heat i'll discuss it in detail one of them is see whose temperature is more the sun's temperature or the earth temperature earth correct so the Water. sun na it will give sorry the earth na it will give out radiations because any body which is hot will give out radiations but earth radiations are long wave radiations i'll talk about this in detail in few minutes at this long wave radiation sun is short wave radiation atmosphere is heated from the bottom any doubts still here no shall i move on so as you go up what is your lapse rate what is your lapse rate what is your lapse rate? question as you go up what is your lapse rate from their surface answer please 2 okay. degree okay never give an answer of 2 degree centigrade uh, per 1000 feet yeah 1.98 degree centigrade per 1000 feet this is the lapse rate this is equal to 6.5 degree centigrade per 1 kilometer am i clear okay now i have asked a question lapse rate and you you gave me this answer okay now whoever has given me the answer define lapse rate very important here without this concept you will make in your navigation exam at least two wrong questions what is meant by lapse rate sir any quantity like temperature and pressure decreases with increase in height okay in this case the decrease in temperature with height is called lapse rate very good correct so lapse rate means decrease in temperature with height okay L write this down write this down and put a star mark because in next 10 minutes i will ask questions and many of you are going to answer this wrong clear so lapse rate means decrease in temperature with height now what is the lapse rate from the if you are like at the mean sea level and if you are going up lapse rate is 1.98 degrees centigrade per 1000 feet or it will be equal to 6.5 degrees centigrade per 1 kilometer correct here this is applicable only till 11 kilometers from the mean sea level till 11 kilometers this is the lapse rate am i clear now from 11 to 20 kilometers the temperature is minus 56.5 degrees centigrade it is constant it will not change okay so the temperature between 11 to 20 kilometers is minus 56.5 it will not change am i clear on this am i clear on this no sir why this happens that is the one question which i will explain in the future chapters so tomorrow when i say layers of atmosphere i will divide layers of atmosphere depending on this lapse rates okay then for example i'll tell you from 20 to 30 kilometers here the temperature na temperature will increase by 0.3 degree centigrade per 1000 feet or 1 degree centigrade per kilometer correct from 20 to 30 why because today only i'll tell you that yet yeah, from 20 to 30 kilometers na 25 25 kilometers there is ozone layer ozone layer absorbs heat from the sun directly that is only layer where which absorbs the heat from sun directly that's why this temperature the temperature increases by 0.3 degree centigrade per 1000 feet or okay now so is it understood from 
the round to 11 kilometers lap straight is 1.98 degrees centigrade per 1000 feet or 6.5 degrees centigrade per kilometer from 11 to 20 kilometers it is constant at minus 56.5 degrees centigrade from 20 to 30 kilometers lap straight increase or temperature increases by 0.3 kilometer 0.3 degrees centigrade per 1000 feet or 1 degree centigrade per kilometer did you note down Till here any doubts because I'm going to ask a question and you are going to make it wrong. Okay. Question. Lapse rate from 20 to 30 kilometers. Okay. Positive. Negative. Is it positive or negative? Negative. Ravi Kumar, negative. So negative left set. Negative answer. Negative. Negative Angit. Negative. Supti, correct? Sanisha. Sanisha. Anyone who wants to answer it as positive, why not positive? G sir, give me an explanation. The temperature will increase now, sir. Okay. And go with positive. Okay. You are going with positive, Anil? Yes, sir. Anil, positive. Anyone with positive? See, temperature is increasing. Here. Now, Anil, tell me what is the definition of lapse rate you wrote down? What is the definition of lapse rate? If height increases, temperature decreases. Correct. See, to call a lapse rate like two, de like 1.98 degrees centigrade per 1000 feet, see, this is plus 1.98 degrees centigrade per 1000 feet. Correct. If the temperature decreases, lapse rate is called positive lapse rate. It is a negative word, correct? Lapse means your temperature should decrease. But if it is increasing, na, lapse rate is said to be negative. So the answer is negative. Okay. So write down lapse rate is said to be negative if the Temperature increases as you go up. Okay. In my school, no? when I was studying in school, I mean, my school is a very big school. Correct. Around there were like, let's say, my class had 500, 600 plus students. Just my class. So big school it was. In that big school, I got marks or I got a gold medal for my handwriting. They gave a medal for my handwriting. Okay. But once I became a doctor, na, do you see this? This is the best I can write now. So what happens is when you become a doctor, you have a lot of patients to see. Now your writing speed should be your thinking speed. Okay. There is no time to write down patiently. So you start doing this. Okay. This is PCM. Okay. One, zero, one. Okay. Done. Okay. Only the pharmacist will understand this is a paracetamol. Correct. That is PCM, paracetamol. <laughs> Correct. So that that I'm used to it. If you don't understand my handwriting, you can always stop me and ask. Clear? Is this clear? Why is the answer negative? I'll give you a question. Calculate. Calculate the temperature at 5,000 feet in ISA conditions. This is question one. Question two. Calculate the temperature at Seven kilometers 
in IS conditions. IS conditions average whatever information ICO has given international standard atmosphere. You have to use that and calculate. Sir, answer uh, question for question number five five degrees Celsius. Question number one is five degrees Celsius. Yes, sir. Okay, what is the answer for question number two? Navigumar, you are wrong. Oh. Sir, 10 degrees Celsius for first question. Uh, second question is 42 degrees Celsius. Okay. Let me explain. In icy conditions at the mean sea level, temperature is 15 degrees centigrade. Correct. Now, as you go up, what is the lapse rate up till 11 kilometers? 1.98 degrees Celsius per thousand feet. 1.98 degrees centigrade per thousand feet. Okay. Now, how many feet you are going up? 5,000 feet. So, the temperature at 5,000 feet will be 15 degrees centigrade minus 5 times 1.98. Okay. Ravi Kumar, did you understand your mistake? Yes, sir. Okay. You took 2 instead of 1.98. Oh, yeah. Correct. Calculate yes. it here, lazy fellows. Very lazy. Yeah. So 15 minus. The answer for second question is minus 30.5 degrees Celsius. 30.5 degrees Celsius. Okay. okay. 15 minus. Uh, 15 minus. Brackets open. 5 into 1.98. Here, how much is the answer for first question here? Yes. 5.1 degrees. It is 5.1 degrees centigrade. Okay. Same way. Man, uh, 5.1 degrees Celsius. Correct. How did you get the second answer? Manshi, explain. Explain to everyone. Sir, so, know the lab state that we have 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer. Yeah, per kilometer. Correct. So, this is applicable till 11 kilometers. So, 15 minus 6.5 into seven. how many kilometers? 7. Okay, if you do this, you will get minus 30.5. Every, everybody got the same answer, right, fans? Yes, sir. Okay, now calculate fast temperature at 18 kilometers. Do it fast. Do minus it fast. Yeah. Sir, minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. Here, see, I want at least one guy to make a mistake. That 15 minus 18 into 6.5. I thought one at least would. Sir, minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. Very good. So, from 11 to 20 kilometers, it is constant, correct? It is minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. How many of you understood? Yeah, this batch night is very good. Huh? Nobody is making a mistake. Huh? Nice. Okay. Now, <clears throat> here at 32 kilometers, now it is minus 44.5. I have never seen a question. Don't remember. Nobody will ask you also in your life. Okay. Take a look at this thing. But one minute, I'll ask you questions. Only one minute you have. Take a look at this table and I'll ask you questions. You have only one minute. Okay, one minute is over. <laughs> okay, who is willing to tell the answers? Raise hands. I'll ask only one question. Okay. Tell me all the ISA conditions without taking a look. Oh, don't look down, huh? Ravi Kumar. Oh, don't look down. Oh. Look at the camera. Okay, tell all the ISA conditions. Fast, fast. Mean sea level temperature is 15 degrees okay. Celsius. Okay. And mean level pressure is 1013.25 okay. hectopascal. Like, see, you have to say like this. On a, on a, like, at mean sea level, the temperature is 15. Okay. At mean sea level, the pressure is 1013.25 hectopascals. Okay, next. 
that means sea level density is 1.225 kg per meter square okay okay uh, okay correct air is considered to be dry okay you know see what happens is you you guys start flying correct so in your flying school there will always be seniors there will be instructors okay now see nobody will ask you to write an essay what are these conditions okay but you know to prove their seniority or somebody will ask there tell all the conditions here you don't know icy conditions also and you are coming to fly from where did you learn then you will say dog dot pilot and then my name will corrupt na will get corrupt na okay here this question na my see my instructor asked me do you know all the icy conditions yes i know Okay, I said all the I say conditions without stop. Okay, then how did you know? Yeah, how are you this much perfect? I said ATPL, da, not CPL. Okay, I'm next level. You're just CPL, na instructor. I'm ATPL. Okay, it was a mnemonic. ATPL, da, air is dry. Temperature at mean sea level. Temperature I know. ATP pressure density. ATP L lapse rate, ATP L. Yeah. Okay. So A T P L is for lapse rate. Okay. D is for density. A is for acceleration due to gravity. See, nobody will ask you this question, but someone in your life will definitely ask you this question. just to prove that you don't remember all these things okay all this i mean just to prove their seniority or something someone tried on me but i am like atp elda clear okay now i will ask i'll, I'll choose myself manish manish manshi manshi correct manshi tell me don't look down look at the screen yes sir yes sir okay temperature at mean sea level is 15 degree celsius tell me atp elda atp elda Start air is dry. Okay. Air is dry. T uh -huh. temperature at mean sea level fifteen degree Celsius. Okay. T pressure is one zero one three point. Very good. Fast. Lapse so rates. Lapse. You know. You know. You know. I understand. You know. Okay. What is the density? The density twelve twelve to five gram per meter cube. Very good. Next. What is D A? What is A? Acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration nine eighty centimeter oh. per second. So this this you have to remember. Just a Correct. Correct. I use this. Probably it will be useful for you. Also. Correct. Next. You understand. Lapse rate is positive till eleven kilometers. Lapse rate is negative from twenty to thirty kilometers. Now, question: What is the lapse rate between? Eleven to twenty kilometers. Sir, constant. I I am expecting a better answer. Zero. Temperature is constant. Minus fifty six. No. Temperature is constant. Someone gave the answer. Someone gave the answer. See, lapse rate is decreasing temperature. How much it is decreasing? It is not decreasing at all. So temperature is constant. So lapse rate is zero. Clear. So lapse rate is positive. Eleven, zero, eleven to twenty, and from there it is negative. Till here, everybody understood everything. Shall I move on? Next. Temperature at five thousand feet is three degrees centigrade. What is the isa deviation here see isa is like they have assumed a set of average conditions and they have given us here these are the things you have to remember now in the actual atmosphere temperature can be different at 5000 feet today it is 3 degrees centigrade the question is how much is the deviation from the isa temperature okay here for this question use 2 uh, degrees centigrade per 1000 feet as this thing so the calculation will be fast What is the ice deviation? Minus Option sir A plus two degrees centigrade B minus two degrees centigrade. Minus two degrees Celsius. 
Okay, this is Manshi. Others. Answer first here. What what? Is it A or B? One or two? Give this. One or two. Your voice is low. Two. This is Sukti. Others here? Others? Sir, B, sir. B. Anybody with answer A, raise your hands. No one. Anybody did not get the answer, raise your hands. Sir, I didn't get it, sir. Okay, fine. You see, in ISA conditions, the temperature at mean sea level, okay, this is the mean sea level, it is 15 degrees centigrade. Now, if you go 5,000 feet up, I said take uh, lapse rate as 2 degrees centigrade per 1,000 feet. You went 5,000 feet. So, 2 into 5, the temperature will decrease by 10 degrees centigrade. Now, that means the temperature in ISA atmosphere should be 5 degrees centigrade. Clear? But today, na, instead of 5, it is 3 degrees centigrade. Is it colder or hotter? Colder. Colder. Correct. Today's temperature is less when compared to ISA. So from ISA, which should be 5, the temperature has deviated or decreased by 2 degrees centigrade. So the ISA deviation is 2 degrees centigrade. Our temperature today is 3 degrees centigrade, which is less than ISA. That means from the ISA, we have deviated towards the lower side. So the deviation is called as minus 2 degrees centigrade. Am I clear on this? Am I super clear on this? Correct. So it is minus 3. Okay. Now, here ISA deviation means how much your current or actual temperature has deviated from ISA or simply actual minus ISA. Very important here in navigation. If you know, don't know this, there are high chances that you will answer plus two degrees degree. So ISA deviation is actual minus ISA. In this case, actual temperature, temperature actual is observed is three degrees centigrade. In ISA conditions, it should be five degrees centigrade. So actual min three minus five, that would be minus two. So minus two is the answer. Okay, you should know the logic wise, you should know the formula wise also. Clear on this, everyone? Shall I move on? Okay. Now, see here, here, what is the lapse rate uh, from the ground in normal atmosphere as ISA conditions, ISA conditions? 1.98 degrees centigrade. But See, in the aircraft, can you sit and calculate here? Uh, this is my flight level. I'm flying at uh, so-and-so flight level, let's say 25,000 feet. Uh, or And when you're doing like, like you're flying at, let's say 25,000 feet. Okay, now you want to calculate. Now, you can, can you do 15 minus 25 into 1.98? Can you do it? Do you have so much time while flying with one hand? Okay, taking your phone, calculator? No. Correct. If you are flying a Cessna, okay, taking out phone, calculator, no, 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 no. Okay, aircraft will like drift off from your path. So the thing is, to make things easier, in real life scenarios, you calculate lapse rate as 2 degrees centigrade per thousand feet because it is very close. Okay. Now, when you are doing this, you don't call it as ISA because ISA is ISA, 1.98 degrees centigrade per thousand feet. When you're doing this, your atmosphere is called as jet standard atmosphere. Okay. In navigation, you, you see questions, correct? The jet standard atmosphere, what is the temperature at this flight level? Okay. It will be a complex question. I'll, I'm giving a simple question. Am I clear? Am I clear? Now, one more thing I want you to remember is this. That generally, na, uh, one meter is equal to how many feet? One meter is how many feet here? 
अप्रोक्सिमेटली करस्पॉन्ड टू दर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड फीट am i clear on this it is just ki in exams huh? they will ask 36 it will be useful once you come to the next chapters where i'll be teaching about tropopause the flight levels jet streams etc etc just remember it it will make things a lot easier am i clear on this okay next whatever class we did today you have already scored two or four marks okay do you want one more mark in next five minutes i can cover one more mark i mean marks are not important again but we will also give like our conceptual understanding also the marks okay here every time i'll tell you a table to remember from this table one question comes every time okay now at mean sea level what is the pressure 1013.5 hectopascal okay 1013 hectopascal is at mean sea level okay now at 5000 feet the pressure will be 850 hectopascals at 10000 feet the pressure will be 700 hectopascals at 18000 feet the pressure will be 500 hectopascals don't write down i'll tell you how to remember and then you can write down okay write me write down from the top 400 hectopascals 324000 wait wait, wait 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 i know you know you guys already know answers okay, i also know the answers okay okay even if you give the answers na i'm not paying you money okay, you are paying me money okay so it is 40000 feet at 40000 feet the Pressure is two hundred hectopascals. Three thirty thousand three hundred is at thirty thousand feet. Four hundred is at twenty four thousand feet. Here there is no exam happening without this question. Okay, they will simply ask, "What is four hundred hectopascal level?" The question will be like this: In ISA conditions or in normal general conditions, like what is? If they if you see anywhere, four hundred hectopascal level. Okay, the guy is talking about your aircraft flying at twenty-four thousand feet. Am I clear? Now, how to remember this? Easy. Do you see? Three hundred hectopascals is thirty thousand feet. Easy to remember. One you already remembered, correct? Next. If you go up by hundred, two hundred, see double it, because Two hundred cannot be two thousand because as you go up, the temp, uh, the pressure should decrease. So, don't half it; just double, just double it. Okay, so two hundred is forty thousand feet. Am I clear on this? Two things. Okay, now if you write this as a table, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred. Correct. This side is remembered. This is forty thousand feet. This is thirty thousand feet. Okay. now if you see this it will be a table of 6 this is uh, sorry this is 24000 feet this is 18000 feet correct easy to remember so you just have to remember here this side na these three values are multiples of 6 see 200 300 400 500 so you easily you can reconstruct the table okay you know 300 is 30000 feet you know 200 is 40000 feet and 400 is 24000 feet because like the table six table so 65 is 30 64 is 24 63 just this is a mnemonic this is how i remember i don't forget these things i did not revise before coming to this class i took this class around like four months back okay back after that i did not take a metrology batch okay fine this is this clear now anyway at mean sea level you know it is 1013 hectopascals correct now you are left with 5000 feet 10000 feet okay so from here it will become 850 hectopascals it will become 700 hectopascals okay there is no 
because you already used six in six table now here there is no 600 hectopascal that is how i remember okay so these are two things that are like difficult to remember sometimes i also get confused but i remember 7 10 they are like kind of correct right? see the time is around 7 10 now you see the time 7 10 okay it's 7 20 but 7 10. this is how i remember this here there is no exam happening without this question clear okay In actual last question, and I'll end the class. In actual atmosphere, what is the lapse rate? Answer, please. You can assume any value. Very good. See, whatever lapse rate that is 1.98 degrees centigrade per thousand feet. Whatever I have told you, I have told you that is an average taken or given by ICAO to us as an IC condition. Correct. If you answer two degrees centigrade per thousand feet, that is a jet standard atmosphere. It will be easy for our calculations. But in the actual atmosphere, now it can assume any value. Today it can be two like one point nine eight. After one hour, it can be like five degrees centigrade per thousand feet. Any value it can assume. In actual atmosphere, in actual atmosphere. lapse rate can assume any value. Am I clear on this? Okay, fine. Okay, here, see, uh, generally I take two hours classes for metrology. Okay, but uh, I want to limit it to one and a half hour because I'm taking the class in the evening. Na? I know how your brains are now because we have been working in the navigation in the morning. Then it will come with homework and then it will come with afternoon sleep and then here. So I'll take one and a half hour classes, but the syllabus will be completed in instead of 30 days. It will, it might take four or five days extra. That's all. Okay. I'll cover it up fast. Clear. With this, I'll end the class today. Any doubts? Till now, whatever is explained, everybody understood. Rajiv, sir, any doubts? No doubts, sir. So, can you just show that table, that uh, hectopascal pressure table? I'll just copy it. Yes, sir. Sir, I, sir, I'll make you remember. I'll make you. I'll make everyone remember. So, two, uh, sir, three hundred is. 300 is 30,000. 30, 30, 30, so 200 is 40,000. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, Clear, sir. Now, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3 is 30,000. 4 is 6 table. You will decrease. 24,000. 24,000. 24, is it clear, sir? And then 2, 3, 4, 400 is clear. 500 hectopascal is 18. 18. 18. 18. So till here you write down. Till here you note down. Now we'll come from the bottom. C level is 1013. 5000 is? 850. 850. 10,000 is? 700. 700. Very good. The table is complete. Everybody remember everything? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll send you the notes uh, in the group. Okay. Please don't share it out with anyone. Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, that's a sincere request from my side. That is the only request it will be. Okay. You can ask me 100 times. I will explain 100 times. Because for the money you paid, I am dedicating me so much to you. So I want, I expect the same. It's a mutual yes, understanding. Clear. Stop share. Uh, guys, uh, one more thing. See, tomorrow, don't say what is the day. Okay. What is special about tomorrow? Tomorrow, it's a very sad day for me. Okay. There will be no class in the evening because see, there, it's a sad day. Na? So I have to do something. I have to do something to cheer me up. Okay. Fine. See, if we are happy also, we'll do the same thing. If we are sad also, we'll do the same thing. But we have to do it. We have to party. Okay. I have to party. Okay. 
anyways i'll see you day after tomorrow okay whatever notes i give you please print it out tomorrow navigation class will be there okay morning i'll take the navigation class okay bye bye okay see you bye, thank sir. you sir. Thank, thank you, you for sir. coming to the class take care good night thank you sir thank you bye bye thank you thank you sir bye bye anybody wants to talk anything you can stay back if not see in the previous class okay there were some students who were asking uh, this question sir we did not understand uh, that concept 15 minus uh, 1.98 into so and so okay now i'll ask you a question assuming isa conditions find temperature at let's say 8000 now to this question that means like in isa conditions the temperature at mean sea level at mean sea level this is 15 degrees centigrade correct now as you go up for every 1000 feet the temperature decreases by 1.98 degrees centigrade okay so 15 will become 15 minus 1.98 so if you go one more 1000 feet that is at 2000 feet it will become 15 minus 1.98 minus 1.98 correct so i will write this equation as 15 minus 1.98 into 2 because Uh, the temperature has decreased by one point nine eight times. Correct. It has decreased by one point nine eight times. And like, how many times it decreased? Two times because the the lab state is one point nine eight degrees centigrade per thousand feet. Now, if you go three thousand feet, it will decrease three times. So fifteen minus one point nine eight into three. If you go four times, it will decrease four. Uh, like, if you go to four thousand feet. One the decrease is one point nine times one point nine eight degrees centigrade. How many times it has decreased? It has decreased four times because you went one more thousand feet up. So thousand thousand. So at eight thousand feet, the temperature would be fifteen minus one point nine eight degrees centigrade into eight. So this would be fifteen minus. One decimal nine eight into eight. So this is minus point eight four degrees centigrade. Am I clear? So did you understand how I made this equation? Okay. So another question. Same assuming I say conditions find temperature. at let's say um 3 km okay so at mean sea level the temperature is 15 degrees centigrade now lab state if it is given in kilometers how much it is 6.5 degrees celsius per kilometer 6.5 degrees celsius per kilometer correct so now if you go 1 km it will decrease 15 minus 6.5 If you go one more kilometer, it will decrease fifteen minus six point five into two. Correct? It decreased two times. So if you go one more kilometer, it will decrease fifteen degrees centigrade minus six point five degrees centigrade into three. So if you calculate this, so how to enter into a calculator? I will show. Calculators are not allowed in the uh, this thing. Your uh, metrology exam. Okay, this I am showing just. For navigation, it will be easy. You have to enter like this: fifteen minus brackets open six point five into three brackets close. So the temperature at three kilometer side is minus four point five degrees centigrade. This is the answer. Is this clear? so after the class one or two students stayed back to ask this doubt i thought i should explain it for everybody shall i continue with today's class
last class mainly we saw IC conditions, correct? And uh, what is jet standard atmosphere? Instead of 1.98, we assume two degrees centigrade is elapsed. Now, question to you all: In the actual atmosphere, the lapse rate. What is the lapse rate in the actual atmosphere? Options are 1.98 degrees centigrade per option A. I'll, I'll write the entire question. In actual atmosphere, lapse rate. Option A, 1.98 degrees centigrade per 1000 feet. Option B, 6.5 degrees centigrade per kilometer. Option C, both are correct. Answer please. Hmm? So both are correct. Both, both are, are correct. correct. Azar, both are correct. Others? Both are correct. Who, who gave the answer? Sukhi? Yes. Okay. Any other answers? It can assume any value. Very good. So all options are wrong. In the actual atmosphere, that means like the atmosphere in day-to-day -day life, the lapse rate lapse rate can assume any value. Yeah. Clear? Okay. Fine. Shall we move to today's class? Let's see. Let's see. If you take this as earth, okay. Now I'll I'll draw the surface like that. This is my earth surface. I am standing here. Now, why am I standing close to earth? Why am I not floating above it? Because of gravitational force. Okay? The earth attracts everything towards it. Same way. Every molecule of air okay, is also attracted close to the earth due to gravitational force. That is why most of the atmosphere lies close to the earth. Am I clear? So, our total atmosphere extends till approximately 480 kilometers. Why 480 kilometers? Because one of the questions in previous DGCA questions is 480. So we will remember this as 480. Am I clear? So atmosphere extends till 480. Okay. Next. Here, 50% of this atmosphere, no? it is within 6 kilometers. Very important question here. Last time asked in exam, last attempt, they have asked this question. 50% of the Earth's atmosphere is within 6 kilometers. Clear? Shall I move on? Next. See, you know, let's say this is this is eighty kilometers. Okay. Now, question is gravitational force. Uniform all over Earth. Option A is option B. See, what is the gravitational pull due to Earth? It is 9.8 meter per second square. Correct? Right? Acceleration due to gravity. Is this uniform all over the Earth? Yes or no? Whoever says yes, raise your hands. Okay, fine. Anil, here I'll call you Sandal. Sorry, I'll call you Sandal. Okay. The answer is no. The gravitational force due to pull of earth is different at different places. It is because, see, uh, the earth is not 
a perfect sphere, first place, correct? If you go down into the earth, you keep on digging down, at some point, it is pure liquid. Heavy, high degrees integrated liquid metal is moving inside there. That is why lava comes out, correct? When Vulcan erupts. So because this is continuously moving, the gravitational pull of earth continuously changes, but it will change very slowly and it is different at different places. That is the reason international standard atmosphere here ICAO has given according to IC conditions, it is 9.8 meters per second square because it is different at different locations. Now, so they have taken the average value. Am I clear on this? This was explained in previous class year. You guys are disappointing a bit. Now, <clears throat> This gravitational pull, na, till 80 kilometers, the pull is very good. Beyond 80 kilometers, the gravitational pull decreases. Correct? It is not even. So, that's why till 80 kilometers, the atmosphere is homogeneous. That means, see, nitrogen will always be 78%. Oxygen will always be 21%. Until when? Until till 80 kilometers. Till here, everybody understood. Beyond 80 kilometers, till whatever uh, ex, ex, like space you want to go, the atmosphere is said to be heterogeneous. That means it is not uniform. So nitrogen can become uh, 70 or 60, oxygen can increase, decrease, whatever. So atmosphere is homogeneous till 80 kilometers. Beyond it, it is heterogeneous. Am I clear till now? Shall I ask you a question? I'll take a new page. I don't want to go up and down. Sorry, time. Percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere. From your lower classes, please answer. I just now wrote it also. What is the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere? 21. 21%. Very good. 21%. Correct. See. 20. That means if you are standing here, if there are 100 molecules around you, 21 molecules are oxygen. Correct. Now let's say you go to 10,000 feet. Guys, mute. Okay. Let's say you go to 10,000 feet. Now, question. Percentage of Oxygen at 10,000 feet. A. 21 percentage. B. More than 21 percentage. C. Less than 21 percentage. Less than 21 percentage. Less than 21 percent. Supi. Who is the other guy answered? Nikhil? Or? Sahil. Sahil. Less than 21 percentage, sir. Less than 21 percentage. Any other answers? So 21 percent alpha. Okay. Azar. Any other answers? See. Answer is 21 percentage. See, what did I tell you? Till 80 kilometers, the atmosphere is homogeneous. Correct? That means even you are at 10,000 feet, 20,000 feet, you are if you take 100 molecules of air, correct, 21 molecules will be oxygen only. Correct. But if you are flying a Cessna, Cessna can fly till 11,000 kilometers. Correct. But if you are going at or about 10,000 feet, you have to carry oxygen tanks. But see, here it is 21 percentage. Here also it is 21 percentage. But why should you carry oxygen tanks beyond 10,000 feet? 
So the percentage of oxygen did not decrease. Na? Think, think on it. So it is because, see, if you take a small volume of air, okay, let's assume this volume of air contains 100 molecules. Of them, there are 21 molecules, correct? If you take the same volume of air, correct? This, at, as you go up, the density of air decreases, correct? Because the density of air decreases, you, for that same volume, there will not be 100 molecules. There will only be 10 molecules. Of that around two molecules are oxygen, correct? The amount of oxygen decreases, but not the percentage of oxygen. How many of you understood what I am trying to say? Raise hands. How many of you did not understand? Raise your hands. Okay. See, here, if you are close to the earth, okay, if I'm, if I'm sitting here, like, okay, if I'm standing here, Let's say this is my atmosphere. Okay, I, I'll take this cone as a, as my atmosphere as an example. Okay. Now, here the density of the air is more because all air molecules are putting weight on the air molecules below them. Correct. Right? Now, as you go up, as you go up, see the density decreases. As you go up, density decreases. As you go up. Now, if you take small volume of air this much, let's say you took one box of air, okay. In this, there are 100 molecules of air. Of this, 21% will be oxygen. Am I clear? But now if you take the same box here, same volume box, here, because the density of air is less, that means the air molecules are far away from each other. Right? When they are far away from each other, there will not be 100 molecules in this box. There will only be 10 molecules in this box. Of the 10 molecules, 21 percentage comes to around 2 molecules. Correct. Right? So there will be 2 molecules of oxygen. A rough example. Correct. Right? See, the percentage of oxygen till 80 kilometers will not change, but the amount of oxygen decreases. Did you understand what I'm trying to say now, Anil? Clear? Everybody is clear. Okay. So that is the reason as you go up, uh, you carry oxygen beyond 10,000. Okay. Now, in air regulations, okay, I'll teach you different levels, okay, where uh, it is critical that you carry oxygen. But by book, if you follow, 10,000 feet, if you are flying an unpressurized aircraft, you should be carrying oxygen. If you're not, if not, you're not allowed to go up. Same way, if you're flying a pressurized jet aircraft, once there is a hole in the cabin or somewhere, it gets unpressurized, you immediately descend to any level below 10,000 feet. Am I clear? Preferably 8,000 feet. Why? I'll talk in next few classes. Am I clear on this? Shall I move on? Next. Air is dash conductor of heat and electricity. Options are A, good. Option B, bad. That means like, for example, if you keep a campfire, like, will you be able to feel the warm? See, I'm asking just a simple question. Air is, a, is it a good conductor of heat and electricity or a bad conductor of heat and electricity? Bad conductor. Sanisha, bad. Others? Answer please, answer please, I'm waiting. 
यार मेक मिस्टेक्स ना बैड सर बैड हु इज इट अंकित बैड सर निखिल अंकित निखिल द आंसर इज बैड एयर इज अ बैड कंडक्टर ऑफ हीट एंड एक्सीडेंट आई विल टेल यू व्हाई ओके फॉर एग्जांपल लेट्स से यू आर वॉकिंग ऑन अ रोड ओके लेट्स से दिस इज योर रोड नाउ बिसाइड द रोड देयर आर हाई पावर लाइंस लाइक दिस करेक्ट डू यू सी डू यू सी now if air is a good conductor of heat and electricity or if it is a good conductor of heat and electricity even if you are walking on the road far away from this wire because air is touching both you and wire the current current will pass from the wire to you and you will get shock correct right? this never happens that is the reason air is bad conductor of heat and electricity now if you are uh, like uh, for example uh, if you are cooking correct right? so you have put your utensil and some oil in it and oil is at now 150 degree centigrade now you want to put some uh, let's say papad okay now when you are cooking when you are far away standing from the stove correct see air is a bad conductor of heat so that's why it you are not getting boiled understood so so it will not conduct heat very easily you can go close to a hot subject hot object it will not conduct heat easily okay so this thing is very important 50% of it, the atmosphere is within 6 km okay sometimes here 1 meter is equals to how many feet repeat this test in last class 3.2 3.28 feet correct so convert 6 kilometers into feet 6000 meters into 3.28 so somewhere around 19000 feet 19680 yeah thing is they may ask sometimes like this okay if they give 18000 feet will you go for 18000 feet as yes, go for 18000 feet you go for the closest answer understood am i clear on this see when i say oxygen is Twenty-one percent in the atmosphere. What is twenty-one percentage? What is that percentage? That means if if you take hundred kgs of air, will it be twenty-one kgs? Is it by weight or is it by volume? It is twenty-one percentage is by volume, not weight. that means if you take a parcel of air like this which is let's say or like how many of you uh, buy milk like from the guy who is like uh, sukti don't touch this screen you are writing so let's take 1 liter of that milk can wala will come in the morning na Okay, let's assume there is air in it. So one liter is hundred mL. Sorry, thousand mL. Correct. So of this thousand mL, two ten mL will be oxygen. Correct. If you take this bottle, assume this is empty and one liter. So if this bottle has one liter of air inside it, two ten mL will be oxygen. This is called twenty one percentage by volume. Am I clear? Now. nitrogen is how much answer please 78 78 78% oxygen is 21% co2 is how much from your lower classes not very difficult questions these are uh, 0.03% very good 0.03% correct now nitrogen is to oxygen 
ratio by volume in the atmosphere answer please nitrogen to volume sorry nitrogen to oxygen ratio by volume in the atmosphere ratio 4 is to 1 correct let's say nitrogen is 78% correct is to oxygen is 21% correct so this is close to 80 this is close to 20 so 4 sir 4 is to everybody understood everybody understood no question nitrogen to oxygen ratio by mass answer please so till now i have told you how much are the volumes correct now i am asking by weight or the mass in the atmosphere anyone can like if you have done plus 2 very well you can easily answer this question 3 to 1 hmm? 3 to 1 yeah how did you calculate if you have read the ic joshi and come to class correct correct okay see nitrogen atom okay its weight is 14 okay atomic weight of nitrogen atom is 14 nitrogen molecule weight is 28 same way oxygen atom atomic weight is 7 oxygen sorry can how much here tell me here 16 correct molecular weight of oxygen is how much 16 to the 32 correct because this is one atom of oxygen is weighing 16 moles okay molecular uh, atomic weight the atomic weight of oxygen is 32 till here everything is clear right next here if you take a parcel of air in this 78 percentage is nitrogen that means the weight would be 78 by 100 into what is the weight of nitrogen 28 divided by so this 21 percentage is oxygen so its weight would be 21 by 100 into its atomic weight 32 Hundred, hundred gone. Seventy-eight into twenty-eight divided by seventy-eight into twenty-eight. This uh, this top portion will be two one eight four. Twenty-one into thirty-two. The bottom portion will be six seventy-two. Okay, two one eight four divided by. Six seventy-two. The answer is three point two five is to one, approximately three is to. Understood. So this is how I would like you to think. So if they ask by volume, four is to one. If they ask by weight or mass, it is three is to one. Okay. In your exam. even if you forget if you just know the atomic weights of nitrogen and oxygen pretty much everybody knows you can calculate three is to one okay i suggest you to remember but see i am a guy who goes only by concept i can't remember things so see i am a very poor student okay so the thing is understand the concepts you will never forget it in your life see i promise you before this class before taking this class i did not come prepared i know that i know the concept that's all i calculated in front of you clear so once you know it you can do anything clear shall i move on so nitrogen to oxygen ratio by volume is 4 is to 1 by mass is 3 is to 1 clear composition of the atmosphere see you understand what is meant by by volume it is Correct. Nitrogen seventy-eight, oxygen twenty-one. 
21 for uh, carbon x is 0.03 if someone wants to write down argon it is 0.9 all other gases are trace gases even water vapor is a trace gas trace gas means its volume is very low am i clear am i clear i want everybody to tell me their hobbies what do you do in your free time i will start with uh, sahil sahil what do you do sir uh, no sir i'm watching movies watching movies okay what movies be specific huh? we have uh, a lot of like, like in our mind everybody is like everybody is bad guys here okay except me Anything yeah. different? Is it action movie? movies like action movies? Uh, Sanisha. Action mysteries. Okay. Sanisha. I sleep. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Best answer. Okay. Till now, nobody has given so best answer. Okay. Very good. Darwin. Darwin, if you are in reading room, you don't talk. Okay. Give me a thumbs up. Now, who is this admin? I forgot. Sir, admin. Okay, Anil. Anil, I'm asking you. Sir, movies. Huh? Movies. Movies. Okay, Nikhil. Like animations. Okay, animation movies. Okay, Nikhil. Sir, I, I want to be honest. No, no, I don't no, have no, any, any hobby. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't have any hobby, sir. You Just, don't have any uh, hobby. Few, so you are always. From few months, busy. I started learning keyboard. Not busy at all, sir. I'm very free guy. Okay, so you are you are you are into music. Just okay. learning keyboard. Uh, and I will watch videos, but not movies. Okay, so when you said I will be honest, I had lot of things going on in my mind. Okay, I imagine Even, a lot of things going on in my mind. Yeah, I am not mentioned a lot. I just said simply. Angit, we are beep with you. So swimming and playing piano, sir. Swimming, playing piano. You are too many musicians in class. Other group. Sir, so driving and sir super bikes. Driving super bikes. Oh, which bike you have? So I have Hayabusa. Hayabusa. Okay. It's a good bike. I'm driven it once. Supti. I like to sing by karaoke with karaoke. Ah uh ah. -huh. I like to sing with karaoke. Oh, you like to sing? Yeah, too many musicians we have here. Too many musicians. Yeah. You know. This is my hobby. Okay. Now the camera is fixed. Okay. So if not, I would have shown you. All the place in this room is filled with plants because I don't know why I like green. It gives me a lot of smoothing, and my main hobby is like I will buy one small plant, okay. Then I will learn about how to multiply it, okay. So I grow in these small pots, and then uh, and then what I do is like uh, I make them into big pots. Like I started with two or three plants around like uh, ten years back. Now, if you see, like I think uh, Nikhil recently came to my house, correct? If you see outside, there's full plants, correct, in front of my this thing. So, I mean, there is a balcony outside this that is covered with full plants. Okay, this is a small room. The balcony is with, with full plants. Here we have something called plants which will. if the sunlight is excess they will die if the sunlight is less or if the temperature is less they will die okay you don't want these plants like this to get exposed to sunlight but they have to be in a warm atmosphere what we do <clears throat> like we take these kind of plants okay we take these kind of plants and we cover the entire plants with a green cloth 
you would have seen correct in the road side where the cell plants they will be covered with green cloth so what happens is like green color allows the sunlight to get in okay to get in i mean it will, it will not be direct sunlight it will take it will allow the heat from the sunlight to get in but this heat cannot go out so the heat is trapped and the plants are protected from the direct sunlight so these plants are kept warm and they are kept away from the direct sunlight am i clear so this kind of uh, tents they are called as greenhouses now what is greenhouse effect see i told you correct atmosphere is heated not due to sun but due to earth sun gives what radiation what radiation sun gives short wave very good short wave radiation so this radiation will heat up the earth surface earth surface becomes hot now earth will radiate long wave radiation right but there are a few just a second back so uh, it gives long wave length uh, radiation now there are some gases in the atmosphere like water vapor carbon dioxide correct ozone and methane what does this do they absorb this long wave length radiation for example this is a cloud right the cloud will absorb this long wave length radiation and see it will not let it go into the outer space am i clear am i clear so now the atmosphere you know its temperature keeps on increasing so it was like this now because of these if these greenhouse gases becomes more correct it becomes hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter hotter hotter, hotter. why because these greenhouse gases will absorb the sun, uh, the earth's long wave radiation am i clear this is called as greenhouse effect if the temperature is more correct uh, sorry the quantity of either of these gases is more correct if the for example we use a lot of uh, uh, we cut down a lot of trees correct then co2 will increase okay that leads to greenhouse gases greenhouse effect then what happens now temperature average temperature is 15 degrees centigrade on earth it will go to 16 degrees centigrade okay so like uh, if you take uh, the poles it is entirely made up of ice the ice melts the seas rise when the sea rises the land will go under uh, see anybody of you from chennai not from chennai no one uh, correct here see if you have visited the chennai beach golden beach correct so if you have visited uh, like when you were a child to walk to the beach it, it used to take at least 15 20 minutes now you can go to the beach in 5 minutes okay like i i went to golden beach like long back as, as far as i remember i had a photo the beach was far away but now when compared to like 20 years back now the beach is has moved forward the land the beach has like i mean the water has covered more land it is very evident in the chennai beach golden beach i believe i am not sure the name correct darwin marina beach marina beach yes did you observe yeah correct yes okay. guys uh, just give me a second okay i just have some work don't log out it is not a break it will take only 2 minutes <laughs> 